morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Myself, Sneha Disha Maheshwari, a proud Fintrama, your faculty for financial management. Welcome, guys. So in this session, we will be doing financial management orientation. In this particular session, we will be talking about that what is the financial management, what is the syllabus area of financial management, what is the exam pattern of financial management and how we should prepare for the financial management exams. So these all topics we are going to cover in this particular session. So without wasting any minute, let's just begin the session and let's just see each and every details of the financial management. So guys, let's begin with the financial management orientation. Now, as I have told you that in this particular session, we are going to discuss about the syllabus area, exam pattern, and some of the ways by which we are going to prepare for the exam. So let's just first start with the what, with the main thing that's the syllabus area. So when I talk about the syllabus area of financial management, so the syllabus area of financial management is being segregated in part A, B, C, D, E. Now over here, the first segment which we have over here, that is the financial management function. In this particular part, we are going to cover the nature and purpose of financial management, financial objectives and the relationship with corporate strategy, stakeholders and the impact on the corporate objective and the financial and the other objective in non-profit organization. So in this segment, we are going to majorly talk about that, you know, how, what is financial management and it's more towards theoretical, the basic concepts and terms which are being used in later chapters are discussed in this particular segment. Then we have part B where we are going to talk about financial management environment. So over here, we are going to talk about economic environment for business, nature and role of financial market and the institutions, nature and role of money market. So over here, we are going to talk about that what is money market. Again, it's more towards theoretical. What is financial market? What are the financial institutions? How they work? And, you know, what is the like, what is the impact of different, different economic policies and things? on the financial management of a company or an entity. Then we have part C. It's a very important part, the working capital management. In this part, we are going to discuss that how in an organization of working capital is to be managed and what are the consequences if it is not being managed. So over here, we are going to discuss that how inventory is being managed, how debtors or receivables are being managed, how payables are managed, how cash is managed. All that is being discussed. And we are also going to discuss that, you know, different techniques to manage all of them. So over here, the nature, element and importance of working capital, management of inventories, account receivables, account payables and the cash is being discussed, determining the working capital needs and the funding strategies. That's all is being discussed over here. Then we have investment appraisal. This is part number D. This is also a very important topic, I would say. This topic you might have studied in your, you know, uh, earlier parts also uh, like in at pm level or at ma level and it's repeating again so it's a very important thing over here we are going to discuss investment appraisal techniques what is the concept of inflation and concept of taxation and how these concepts impact your you know future cash inflows and hence they impact the decision making perspective of investment appraisal that's being discussed. Then we are going to discuss adjustment for risk and uncertainty in the investment appraisals. And lastly, we are going to discuss something which is specific investment decision in which we are going to talk about the lease, the lease or buy decision, asset and replacement decision and the capital rationing decision. So this is what we are going to discuss in this particular segment. Then we have the next segment, which is the business finance. So in this segment, we are going to discuss that how in an entity business finance is being, you know, like business is being financed. So first we are going to discuss the sources of business finance. So from where you can raise the, you know, funds, you can raise funds from debt, from equity and all of that. Then we are going to discuss that what is the cost of capital of raising the funds. So we are going to discuss cost of equity, cost of debt and all of that. Then we are going to discuss sources of finance and their relative cost. Again, the same thing. Basically, what are different, different sources of finance available to or different, different entities and what are the associated costs related to do. 
then we are going to discuss the capital structure theories and the practical consideration so we there are some of the capital structure theories that we are going to discuss and then lastly we are also going to discuss finance for small and medium enti size entity that what are the different sources of finance for our smes that's what we are going to discuss in that particular segment then we have the next segment that is business valuation so in this segment we are going to discuss nature and purpose of the valuation of business and the financial asset model for the valuation of shares that how you are going to value the shares the valuation how you are going to do valuation of debt how you are going to do valuation of financial asset and then lastly there's a concept known as emh that is efficient market hypothesis and over here also we are going to discuss its you know practical consideration in valuation of the shares so that's basically your part f over here then we have the part g which is risk management so in this particular segment we are going to discuss what are the different different risk associated and over here we are going to discuss majorly the exchange rate risk and the interest rate so what are the causes of exchange rate risk and the different uh, you know interest rate fluctuation then we are going to discuss the hedging technique for foreign currency risk and also the for interest rate risk then we have the last segment that is the H segment that is employability and technical technological skills. So over here we are going to discuss yeah like how you are going to use the computer technology to efficiently access and manipulate you know the relevant datas or anything which you have over here relevant informations and the datas. Then we are going to discuss work on the relevant response options using available function technology as you know as the as we have over here as would be the required in the workplace then how to navigate windows in the computer screen to create and amend responses to the exam requirement using the appropriate tools and presenting data and information effectively using the appropriate tool so that's a, is the major thing which we are going to discuss over here so majorly over here the thing is that we are going to understand that how our computers and the technology is being used in our workplaces and also in our exams so that's my part number h so this is basically the syllabus area of what of financial management now we are going to discuss about the exam structure of financial management and when i talk about the exam structure of the financial management it's very important for us to first understand what is the time allowed so the time allowed for the you know for the prospective is 3 hours now over here one thing which you need to understand that you will be your exam will be conducted in like when it's it's been conducted in for 3 hours over here your entire paper will be divided into three segments section a section b and the section c now when i talk about section a so in section a if you look over here there will be 15 objective questions of 2 marks each making the total of 30 marks when i talk about section b it is three objective you know you will be given three case studies of 10 10 marks each and that makes the total of 30 marks over here and in these case studies you will be like in each case study there will be five questions of two marks each so 5 into 2 10 that's how it is and then you will be having a section c over here you will be having a long case study based questions so each question will or will be of you know 20 20 marks so question 1 again it will be of a 20 mark and again question number 2 again of a 20 marks so that makes the section c of 40 marks so yes section c is a very important section and as we have discussed in the you know in our sessions also and in our video question marathon also that we have done a quite number of questions related to section c and majorly questions comes from working capital cost of capital your uh, uh, you know risk management and investment appraisal the segments for the section c so that's the exam structure of financial management now let's first talk about some of the ways or the tips by which you should prepare your financial management exam so this i have told numerous times that whenever you are starting your preparation please start your preparation 3 months in advance it's a professional exam so you should prepare accordingly first thing second thing if you are you know 
you, you are preparing from, you know, from print time classes or any, any study text or anything, you should first complete your study text and then you have to go through the exam kit. Whatever the exam kit you are choosing, at least twice before sitting for the exam because that's how you are going to get a confidence for exam that you know okay these are the questions which i have done and i now know the questions very well so that's the uh, i would say second thing which you should do before sitting for the exam complete your study text and then complete your exam kit and lastly you should give a lot of mocks before the exam because again that's going to help you in understanding that what are the areas where you are struggling and what are the areas where you are good so you can work accordingly on different different areas and you can enhance your performance so that's all about the financial management orientation in which we have discussed about the syllabus area in which we have discussed about the exam pattern and at the end we have discussed about some of the ways by which you are preparing for the exams so now i hope you get a clear idea that what is financial management and how you need to prepare for this exam i will see you again till then this is c dasha maheshwari signing off mm -hmm.